my first acquaintance with Ray, uh, not with Mr. Ray, but with the, his work, was when I was a student in National School Drama, where I didn't think that I will ever be a film actor. I had joined the drama school. Looking at myself in the mirror, I thought, I won't be good for films, because films needed a certain kind of chiseled faces, etc., and I didn't have one. Till I saw Satyajit Ray's film, because we had a film appreciation course in the, film, uh, in the National School Drama. And I saw his characters, and they were ordinary looking. I said, damn it, you and I can look like them. So that was the first revelation to me, that it is not really, because the only cinema I was exposed to was the commercial cinema uh, uh, in Punjab. There was hardly any other kind of cinema which one was exposed to as a, as a college student. And then, much later, I had the opportunity to, to work with him after I did Akrosh. He happened to see Akrosh, and uh, Govind Yalani brought a message from Calcutta that Mr. Ray wants to take you in his film. And I, I was extremely excited. He said, you should call him. So I called up, and I'm, I was shivering my, on the telephone, and I couldn't say very much. I said, Dada, um, this is Ompuri here. He said, oh, well, I'm glad you called up, and I want you in this film. Are you free around this time, etc.? And everything was organized, and uh, he sent me the script. And first time I met him was at uh, Raipur, where we were shooting at the railway station. Me and Dr. Mohan Agashi, both of us, we traveled from Bombay. And one expected that somebody from the production should be on the station, so I peeped out of the window looking for, you know, that somebody would see us and uh, come to receive us. And I just froze with a bag in my hand because it was Satyajit Ray himself on the railway station at Raipur, and uh, how can you not spot him? Because even if there were 1,000 people, all necks were here, and his neck was above everybody else's neck, because he was 6 feet 4 inches. And I, I really, that moment is very dear to me, and I was very touched that he personally came to the railway station. And then we went to the hotel, I think barely he gave us 15 minutes, and he knocked at our door, uh, saying, may I come in? So we saw again, you know, this man trying to sort of, he had to lean, because it was not Calcutta, where he has 10 feet door, 10 feet high door. It was a Raipur hotel, which had only 6 feet high door. So he had to sort of bow down and come in. And we just jumped, both of us, me and Mohan Agashe. What he wanted to know, he said, would you like to use a moustache for the part? He said, Dara, it's up to you, whatever you say. So he sat down on our bed and he said, uh, and took a pen and paper and he made my, you know, a little sketch and then he saw with moustache, without moustache, he said, okay, we'll, you have a moustache. I said, fine. <laughs> you know, these were, you know, a couple, couple of images and uh, I remember the first shot. I was, Though I had worked in about, you know, 12 films before Sadgati, and I had done about 50 plays, but I was under awe. I'm sure he could sense that. Maybe that was one of the reasons to relax his actors. He came personally to the railway station and came to our room in the hotel so that he should put his actors at ease. You know? They should feel that there's no need to fear of Satyajit Ray. You know, psychologically, I'm sure it must be one of the reasons. Anyway, first shot I remember was a very simple shot that I'm supposed to be coming in to the door and ask for agun, you know, a piece of coal, burning coal, for Duki to smoke. And he said, Om, you walk in gingerly. Now, this is 10 years ago. I'm sorry, I didn't know the meaning of gingerly. And I, I looked puzzled, that's so why I said, uh, Anikda, uh, what's, what's gingerly? He said, uh, well, instead of saying hesitation, he gave me a physical exam example, which is a wonderful quality of a great director, that you, if you give a real example from life, there's nothing like that, you know, which in acting terms we say as if. 
So he said, Om, you, uh, well, you must have seen a dog or a goat trying to get into the door and, uh, you know, afraid and not sure whether to come in. Now, I had a, if he had said hesitation, wouldn't have given me so much. But when he said goat and a dog, which I had seen many times in life, so instantly I became a goat. <laughs> and I had no problems. So the first shot was taken. And then he said, OK. Now the first take, OK. Then again I was puzzled. I said, Manila, are you sure? Was it OK? He said, of course, yes. Why? You, you didn't feel all right? I said, no, I just wanted to. Because I was thinking maybe he'll think, oh, this is an actor from Bombay. It's not so bad. You know? So I was, I was unsure. He said, look, I mean, you don't, you don't worry. I mean, if you want to take another one, but I think it was OK. And then there's another incident. Like, a lot of people had said, and I had read, and I think it was a total myth that whatever he had written on paper was ultimate, and he will not change. I think he was a great improviser also. He would do all his paperwork, but yet he is open to anything which is relevant, which is, fits into the, the, the total scheme of his film, and which enhances his theme. Uh, like, for example, you know, one little shot where uh, this woman, when I asked for Agul, this was the next shot, she throws gallously at me, which she did, even in that shot. But then I said, Dada, uh, can, we, can we have one more? He said, why? I said, uh, if she throws, now this is the tricks of the actors, you know, that you want, you want to look for a gesture. Now, when she threw a coal, she did throw callously. It could have fallen on me, but I wanted it to fall on me. So I said, can we do it for that? He just took a second. He said, ah, I know what it is. OK, fine. We'll have another one. So I told Geeta, I said, please see that it falls on my feet. You know, to enhance uh, emotion. Though the coal was not really hot and burning, it was all pretense. So it gave me a gesture to, to say, oh, you know, as if I have burnt myself. So he, he was open to you know, these kind of things, which was, which was extremely wonderful and very, I found him very warm to the actors. Uh, and we had little, little, I won't take too long. You know, we had little, little incidents, you know, like I was very afraid to talk to him. You couldn't be casual with him because he didn't give that impression. At the same time, if you, if you had anything to ask him, he was always affectionate. He never avoided anything. So I asked him a very simple thing. Dada, do you like fruit? You don't like fruits because I never saw him eating fruit. He said, well, I, I don't. The only fruit I like is guava. I said, oh, what's guava? <laughs> I said, Dada, what's guava? Now, he didn't know Hindi. <laughs> he didn't know Amrud. So we were stuck. Then he said, you've seen Patha Panjali. I said, yes, I have. You know that old woman, uh, woman what she eats and the, the child brings? That is guava. I said, oh, Dada, you're talking about Amrud. <laughs> you know? So these kind of little, little things. And remember, he was also naughty. He was quite naughty. Like Gita, uh, my colleague in the film, one day, we were sitting after the lunch. And uh, she said, Manikda, uh, why don't you wear kurta pajama? It looks very good. It will look very good on you. And he was smoking his pipe. And, with all innocence, because you know, I can imagine his expression, etc. He said, oh, Yes, but Manalsen wears it. <laughs> so I found that I found that moment that here's a man with total, total lack of hypocrisy. He has a one, we and me and Nasir, for example, we pick on each other like that. So I think they, they really had a wonderful relationship. It's, it's just some buggers in the media. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't mean all. Um, you know, uh, who overdo, overdo these things and sens sensationalize.
because I think he had a wonderful sense of humor, uh, which was which was again a very reserved way. I mean, he wouldn't he wouldn't laugh like you know like we laugh ha, but he would have a very very quiet sense of humor. Well, he was he was naughty once again. Has anybody heard Satyajit Ray calling names? Any of his friends, Sudanan Babu? Apni no. Sunichin? Nah. There is a recorded, see, Nimai Ghosh, who's worked with him, is a still photographer of his, who's been with him for the last so many years, I think, maybe 20, 25 years. Now, he has a wonderful collection of his photographs. Beside that, he told me that he also records him sometime, his instructions, his talks on the sets, etc. So, Nimai that told me once, he said, we were filming a shot where there's a piece of jaggery and Manik Babu was taking a shot and an ant is supposed to climb on it. So he was waiting for this shot, all set, and they left the ants there. Now he's sitting, sitting, sitting. This bugger will try and climb up with his two little mustaches, do this, do that, and then climb down. He would wait. Then again he starts climbing, so he is again ready. When he did it about three times, he said, Dutsala. <laughs> so I think occasionally he did call names also. Um, well, uh, every time I went, I visited him. He was very warm, very affectionate to me. But I used to feel, I never sat with him more than for, for five minutes or ten minutes, I just had a cup of tea and I wanted to go and sit inside with Sandeep or, in, you know, because I felt that he was one man who was always doing something or the other. I said, I will ask him casual questions, how are you Manikda, did you see that film or did you, I'll be wasting his time and he must be on some creative work. This was always at the back of my mind and that is my respect for the man. Uh, well, incidentally, he also gave me one lunch. I think he was a bit of a conjuice, perhaps. <laughs> you know, because not many people have had lunch. Not, uh, certainly not Sham Benegal. He made a whole long documentary. I'm sure he never gave Sham a lunch, but I had a feast. You know? <laughs> Four kinds of fish. I was, uh, maybe I was considered a Brahmin or what? <laughs> no, because I, I think he... Uh, it, Sham has mentioned in his article in Sunday somewhere that uh, he was he was always uh, you know he didn't want to waste his time on trivialities you know? and people would bore him I'm sure they would so and but he was never rude he would just not encourage you but he wouldn't be rude he wouldn't say uh, all right sorry uh, you know, I've, I've got to do some work. No, he wouldn't say that. But he will be very subtle about it and uh, he would mean to say, look, if you have any business, please come on. Otherwise, uh, you know, let's do our jobs, which I think is a perfect attitude for a man of his stature who is involved in a creative activity. Now, I have one thing against which I'd like to voice here is Ajkal. There's a newspaper, Bengali newspaper called Ajkal. I came back from LA because the uh, City of Joy was released there. When I came back, I heard that uh, they have been publishing uh, some reports while Mr. Ray is ill and he is struggling with his life in the hospital. Uh, <clears throat> that me and Shabana, we have been nasty to Mr. Ray. Ajkal is a rag. It's a, I don't consider it a newspaper. I think it should be used for toilet paper, frankly. <laughs> and if I, I, if I ha have the power to do it, I will pick up the whole staff, put them in a boat, take the boat into the deep sea, and make a hole in the boat, and get into another boat and come out. That's what I do to Ajkal, because the way they've been writing about me and Shabana, about Mr. Ray, it is not an insult to me, 
it is an insult to this great man <laughs> now the bombay film industry some film star known who also is uh, aspiring politician Minal Sen told me that he read that Shatrughan Sinha has said in screen that Om Puri and Shabana Azmi have blackened our faces. One that they never consider me one of them, and I never consider them one of me. So there is no question of owning me. Now, beside that, is I would like to ask the film industry whom he represent. Actually, not an industry. I have written a couple of compliments for them. It should be called film shopping center, film bazaar, or film general store. The commercial film industry. They didn't have the courtesy to close down their shop even for one day. When this man passed away, I like to ask uh, the industry. This is my reaction to that statement. uh you want me to carry on for a bit, little while or should i stop it okay now it's a myth as i said that ray will stick to his paperwork which is not true the whole rain sequence in sadgati for example was not planned we couldn't afford to have artificial rain so the scene was not supposed to be shot in rain but the day we were supposed to do that scene smita patel she was supposed to go to new york that evening she was supposed to leave raipur go to nagpur to catch a flight go to bombay take a flight to new york because there was a uh, india film festival in america uh, this is that time now in the afternoon immediately after lunch he was sitting around and suddenly ray looked up and he said clouds now i remember he jumped from his chair and he stared at the sky for about 10 seconds and then he just went mad i have not seen i worked with him for 12 days i didn't see him working like that he just went in bengali he said trolley you know whatever trolley they had whole trolley and the whole logic was which later i understood was he wanted to film this scene in rain now why he wanted the whole trolley now this is a you know it it amazes me the the instinct which which is very rare instinct the fact that suppose halfway through this bloody rain stops which is unpredictable where will he bring the rain for the other half of the scene so he wanted to shoot the whole scene in one shot and believe me this is what happened he took three takes of the same scene and the rain stopped and my close ups were done with artificial rain because it was just a close up and he is lying down and somebody had a branch of a tree and was pouring water with the with the lota <laughs> now the man could foresee now the, his sense of anticipation i think was absolutely amazing uh then another touching moment i remember is the when uh, there's a scene when dukhi breaks down he himself was handling the camera and the shot was this much and uh, dukhi has been working whole day he hasn't eaten anything etc and so he's he breaks down so while doing this scene he took the shot and there were villages around they all clapped and they all liked the shot and he was also very happy but then he walked up to me he said om what were you doing with your hand i said with hand dada i was just i was clutching my stomach he said clutching your stomach i said i thought you know the man is hungry and he's crying so his stomach must be hurting so i was just pressing my stomach he said oh that that's nice but i loosen my frame a little do you mind giving another shot i mean i was so overwhelmed in the manner he said that normally for a emotional scene you have to really you know for 5 minutes you have to concentrate and you know think of the circumstances and then you know you charge yourself emotionally but in the manner he said it was so tender so warm can i take another take this was brilliant i said sure dada and immediately he went back a little he loosened the frame a little so that he could see a bit of the arm 
and uh, he took this shot and it was as good as the la our last one. Now, you know, that was his affection, you know, that was his humility, humanity or sensitivity, whatever you may say. Um, <clears throat> I think that's all I can say. And uh, last night, I was, I called up a friend. I said, I want to read a poem or something. And I couldn't really find time or didn't occur to me that, uh, you know, is there anything? I said, I don't want to mourn him because I don't really consider that he is dead. And he will not die. I mean, for me, Chaplin is not dead today. Tagore is not dead today. And... Uh, it's unfortunate that, you know, this is part of nature and we have to accept death. Uh, so I, I, but is there something which says something like that? And uh, this MK Rena, 1130 at night, he <laughs> knocked at my door and he gave me these four wonderful lines, I think. Lives of great men all remind us we must make our lives sublime and departing leave behind us footprints in the sands of time. Dakhao ve manikda.